everyone, welcome to session one of Plastic Free Christmas, our first uh, Christmas webinar series that we've done. We're really looking forward to getting chatting to you. So if you are there, do put a comment in and say hello, tell us who you are and what you're doing um, and we'll say hi back to you. So I'm Helen Miller, I'm from Plastic Free Denim and I'm joined tonight by... Christine, I'm Christine Bell and I'm from Plastic Free East Martin. I'm also Plastic Free Bingley as well, because I like to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Very important to, you know, spread yourself. Yeah. So, uh, before we get cracking with the webinar, and whilst people are just coming on, I thought it'd be really cheesy and tell some Christmas jokes. So, I asked my son, who's 14, if he knew any Christmas jokes, and he just said, shrugged his shoulders and said, Google. So I went to Google and I have found some Christmas jokes. So here we go. Here goes the first one. What carol is heard in the desert? Oh, camel ye faithful. Oh, camel. Faithful. So, uh, shall I fake laugh? Yeah, yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> what do you get if you eat Christmas decorations? Oh, I know this one. Go on. Tinselitis. Very good. But only if it's plastic free tinsel, right? Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's have another one. Why do. Oh, that's a terrible one. I'm not doing that. <laughs> what happened to the. <laughs> it's not even Christmas themed. The others have been really good. Uh, <laughs> uh, why are Christmas trees like bad knitters? I don't know. Why are Christmas trees like bad knitters? Because they keep losing their needles. Oh, ha ha ha. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Should we have a knock knock one? Go on then. Knock knock ones. Uh, oh, this one you'll know. Knock knock. Who's there? Mary. Mary who? Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> that, was that was a real laugh. That was a real laugh. That was a real life laugh. Was a genuine one. Oh, this is good. Knock knock. Who's there? Hannah. Hannah who? Hannah Partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> I like that one, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that is a good one. Okay, well, we'll leave the jokes for now. I might come back to the jokes because, you know, a joke is always good. But before we start the main part of the presentation, if you look in the comments section, you'll see that uh, our moderator, Dan, has put a link there. So we want you to just click on that link and it will take you to a web page where we want you to answer a question. So um, the question is, um, well, can you give us any examples of Christmas single-use plastic. So things that crop up um, that uh, at Christmas that might be making use of, of single-use plastic. Any ideas? You must have some. I'm going to put some in. I'm going to share the screen with you because these should then pop up and you should be able to see them as they come in. So somebody's already put some on there, mm. so you should be able to see that. Let's see what else comes in. I'm really interested to know what things people think are their most problematic bits of plastic at Christmas. You'll see that Ooh, I, that's I'm me on. talking. Don't want to listen to myself. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> already put some on. Oh no! No again! Stop! Stop! Let's see what else comes in. I'm really interested to know. There we are, let's have a look. Right, so, so we've got glitter and Christmas crackers. Um, High on the list. Can you think of anything? Christmas crackers have been really um, well publicised as well in the last few years, haven't they? I think so. Oh, that food packaging. Mm. All year round, but worse at Christmas. Yeah, because we eat more food. Mm -hmm. Same for glitter. Got... Yeah, and also I think more um, pre-packaged food as well at Christmas quite often. Yeah, the thing of, you're so busy, let's make it easy and wrap it in five layers of plastic. Oh, glitter. Another one that's come in again. Any more? Sellotape, I like it, yeah. Let's see what else people can come up with. The thing about glitter at Christmas, people sort of automatically put them together don't they it's on a lot of things well that's the thing yeah i wonder if 
we can think of any more. Well, there's the decorations. Yeah. Oh, plastic bags, yeah. It's a good one. Suggest one, if you've got some ideas. There's lots lying in now. Crisp packets. Crisp packets. Crisp packets. We were talking about that yesterday. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crackers, that's another one there. Mm -hmm. Add one in. What's your worst bit of single use plastic at Christmas? It's all the plastic ribbon, isn't there? Oh, that's a good one, yeah. And it all gets tied up in knots. It's really hard to untie, to reuse. Yeah, someone's put that in for us. Some drinks bottles. Yeah, that's a big one, isn't it? Mm. Pop, stuff like that. Yeah. Glitter is the one that people uh, are not, the enjoying, most, yeah. not enjoying the most. Plastic plates look, yeah. Cutlery, yeah, yeah, disposable, mm. yeah. Yeah, glitter, glitter though. Yeah. Wrapped Christmas cards, now that's a good one. Mm. You can get them actually. I got some last year just in a cardboard box, but yeah, the fancy ones that you might buy in, um, I don't know, you know, sort of a more gifty type shop, they do often come wrapped in plastic, don't they? Yeah. With glitter on. Yeah. There are some now that are, that are coming. If you have a look, you can often find some that are, are not wrapped, but it's uh, few and far between. But somebody's put baubles that get thrown away, yeah, that get damaged. Mm -hmm. so and people really change the decorations year in, year out, don't they? So. Yeah. Mm. Straws, I can see. Well, they should be on their way out now, shouldn't they? Oh, the, oh yeah, Advent calendar. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw yeah. a really good post on a plastic-free group on Facebook about somebody who kept last year's, kept the children's Advent calendar from last year, and they reused the inside, the, you know, because it is like a mould. They yeah, melted yeah. down some chocolate and then poured it into the moulds and made reused it this year. That's dedication for you, isn't I it? I know, hardcore. <laughs> Very impressive. Certainly worth sharing. It's good. I like it. But there are a lot of the reusable ones that are sort of pockets and things, aren't there, that you just pop there are, yeah, And actually, you could just do a series of envelopes. Yeah. And put something in envelopes. Or socks. Yep. Any more people? Do you want to put any more on before we stop this? I'm quite, I quite like this. Oh, pointless, pointless passing uh, from toys. Yeah, from toys. Yep. Yeah. And it's just yeah, a nightmare to get them out as well on Christmas Day. With those little um, little plastic bits of twine that they're wrapped up in. Yeah. Oh, they're like, um, what do they call cable tie type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, goodness. They're a nuisance. And some of the actual toys that are plastic are totally pointless as well. Yeah. Especially inside the crackers. Oh, and yeah. the things like the Kinder Eggs. I know it's not Easter we're talking about, but... You know what I mean? Like those little prizes that you yeah. get. Yeah, and they them. usually do like a Christmas version of these things, don't they? They do. And yeah. there's lol dolls and things like that. Oh, I hate those. I just find, I just think they're really unattractive, but then my kids are a bit old for that kind of thing. Though. Yeah. My any more for any more before, before we come back? So if you've just joined us, hi and welcome. We're just making a, um, a word cloud of all the different plastic items of single use, single use plastic items at Christmas, basically. And the most popular two that we've got at the moment are crackers and glitter. Mm. But there's lots of suggestions there of things that, that people find irritating. Excess wrapping paper, 
has just come on. Uh, wrapping paper is already on there. Things like plastic bags, disposable um, cutlery and plates and cups, packaging from food. So I'm really encouraged by this because actually I think we are well on the way to talking about all these things tonight, aren't we, Christine? We are. Oh, we knew what they were going to say. Yeah. If you want to keep adding to this, you absolutely can as we're going along. And also, I should mention, um, you can also uh, add a question into the comments. Um, you can add a question into the comments and we will be doing a Q&A tomorrow uh, with a couple of other friends um, and we'll hopefully we'll get all those questions answered tomorrow. I can see that Jenny's here. Hello Jenny! And Nick is here as well. If you are here and you want to send us a comment and say hello, you can. Um, that would be brilliant. We'd love to say hi. Okay, shall we begin the uh, formal presentation, Christine? Shall we do Let's that? Let's begin. Okay. One moment, please. Right. There we are. So, welcome to Plastic Free Chris Christmas. Tips and tricks for reducing festive waste. Now, the first thing that I want to do is show you a little video, but this comes with a warning because there is one tiny little unpleasant word that's in there. So if you are, have got young children in the room, you may want to distract them. Or if you are somebody who might be uh, offended, then you might want to just um, close your ears for this one. I did think about bleeping it out but it's actually got subtitles so it wouldn't have made any difference <laughs> but this is a message from Greenpeace USA to the American supermarket Target which is a little bit like Asda a big supermarket in America um, and this is a message to them <laughs> Last weekend I went to Target to find this last minute bargain. But Target is filled with plastic and turtles are pissed. Black Friday has come and look what we got. A truckload of plastic that will never rot. This cucumber's wrapped in plastic, these fruit sucks and this salad. This puff doesn't go for plastic and neither should you. We don't have much time, we're counting on you. To break free from plastic and all single use. We wish you a more ambitious. We know that you make commitments, but we want some more specifics of how you'll improve. So stop using so much plastic. Just stop using so much plastic. Please stop using so much plastic and no single use. Oh, 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 oh. oh, so there we go. That's how right. <laughs> it, it made me laugh that video. Apologies for the swear word in there, but it was—I think it was worth showing it for that. And you can find that on YouTube if you want to watch it again. It's, um, as I said, Greenpeace USA. Now, here we are. The problem. So I'm going to read out some statistics, and this is really the why behind the watch. So this is why it's important that we start thinking about reducing single-use plastic, in, especially at Christmas. So. 10 million turkeys are consumed in the UK, and that's over 3,000 tonnes of packaging. 125,000 tonnes of plastic packaging is estimated to be thrown away this Christmas, 2020. 227,000 miles of wrapping paper will be used, and much of it containing or packaged in plastic. 40 million rolls of plastic sticky tape will be used. Gift packaging, bubble wrap and batteries will equal 100 million bin bags full of rubbish on Christmas Day this year. That's an awful lot. That's just in the UK. That's not worldwide. That's just the UK. Wow. 500 tonnes of Christmas fairy lights will be discarded. You know when you get them out and you try and switch them on and they don't work? Mm -hmm. away. 12,000 tonnes of Christmas trees will be thrown away. 14% of that are going to be artificial trees that people just don't want anymore. And artificial trees are made of plastic. An extra 30% of rubbish is created during the festive season in the UK every single year. And we've got to ask ourselves, where is all this rubbish going? 
very little of it gets recycled because a lot of the kinds of rubbish that we're talking about here are not recyclable or people just don't recycle it. So it is very, very problematic. So the, the easiest way to get rid of it is not to recycle it, but is not to have it in the first place. So with that in mind, Christine's going to talk to us about the waste hierarchy. Yeah, this is one of uh, that Jen Gale shares. Uh, and um, you start at the bottom uh, with the refuse. So people are often saying to me like, oh, what do I do with this? I've finished with that and bring me empty wrappers. But um, it's when you're in the, in the shop and you stood looking at the item that you need to think what's going to happen to this plastic wrap that's surrounding it or all this actual gift. Do I need to buy this item? Do I need it? is the person why am i buying it so there's the first step is refuse don't buy it if it's unnecessarily wrapped up if you don't really need it you know when you get to the checkout and you've only and you've got two or three things and they say do you want a bag with that you can refuse because you could probably carry it off it in your bag in your handbag um even if you've forgotten your bag which i do often <laughs> Um, so then I always end up with like a big heap of stuff because I, ref I refused by to have another carrier bag. Um, and the next thing is to reduce. So, okay, you do need to get these things, but do you need to get as much? Because obviously it's the season of greed and gluttony and excess, but it doesn't have to be. So just cut back a little bit on, on how much you're getting. And then as you move up the, the triangle, it's reuse. So reuse the things you've already got at home if you've got an artificial tree you don't really need to replace it this year you could reuse it reuse your decorations reuse the somebody said like excess wrapping paper uh, in the word cloud at the beginning so if you've got excess put it away get it out next year and reuse it you know you don't have to go and buy all new again if you've got some christmas cards left over this year keep them and reuse them next year uh, and then rehome if you don't want your christmas tree anymore or you're having a pre-christmas clear out of all your toys then we're really lucky because we've got things like ebay and um facebook marketplace and all the things that we all know about where we can not only get rid of the stuff we don't want we can actually um benefit from it we can sell it or donate it to charity and they'll benefit from it um, so find a, another home for the your rubbish that you don't want because <laughs> someone else will want it um uh, and then repair so there's i mean i was just thinking about what you said helen about the fairy lights i don't i really hope there's a way that they can be repaired or that sometimes it could be a few isn't it? in the or it could be something in the plug that needs sorting yeah and some of them come with like spare bulbs because it might be just one of the bulbs is gone um, but yeah, so, so there are some things that can be repaired and there are lots of um, local groups now that do repairing. I'm trying to think of the name of one of them. It's definitely one in Leeds um, and it's just sort of volunteers that help each other to fix things. But, you know, ask on social media or um, ask around, ask on the school playground somebody might be able to help you fix the broken things that you've got um uh, and then if all else fails then uh, recycling is the answer and there are a lot of things that can be recycled now obviously it curbside and then TerraCycle have got a lot of things going and there are various bins around places you know take your old shoes and clothes and um even your bags from your frozen chips and whatnot can go back to the supermarket to be recycled. Um, and the last thing is rot and a lot of a lot of packaging actually now is starting to swap to things that can go on your compost heap, um, magazines and things are coming in in that and peelings. There'll be a lot of peelings at Christmas. I think rot as well means sending things to landfill, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I think, I think a bit impossible. Yeah, I know. Um, I think I think composting is is kind of recycling, really, because you're turning it into something else. So yeah. I think I think the rot is the is a landfill, so it's the kind of the last thing that you would ever ever do. Oh, wow. right. nobody would ever fly it because that is way worse than. <laughs> well, obviously. Yeah. Or littering, which is why that isn't on the pyramid. 
Okay. Yeah. But even just sending things to landfill, it just makes me sad. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is possible to avoid it if uh, you really think about it. Mm. So at Christmas then, the main offenders that we think, and actually the word cloud um, showed this to be what you think as well, uh, are decorations, gifts and wrapping and food and drink. So we've broken it down into those sort of three categories. I'm going to talk about decorations and then Christine will talk about gifts and wrapping and because you can still see her she's got some props as well so that's going to be exciting and then, <laughs> and then we'll come back to me and I'll finish off with talking about food and drink okay so decorations so Christine mentioned this uh, a couple of moments ago when we were looking at the hierarchy there um, a real tree or an artificial tree well the answer is it depends so the best thing you can do is use what you already own okay so if you've already got an artificial tree or you've already got a real tree in your back garden that's in a pot that you can move inside then that's the best thing to use because you're then not using up any additional resources you already got it use it if you haven't already got something then the next thing the next best thing you can do is ask yourself what can you borrow or what can you buy second hand okay so there are lots of people who might be getting rid of their artificial christmas tree they don't want it they might have one that you can just have for nothing it happens all the time actually i've seen it about five or six times in the last week on facebook people trying to get rid of uh, christmas mm -hmm. trees they don't want or you could buy it second hand the shops are opening back up now so things like charity shops and second hand shops uh, will be accessible to you and then if you can't do any of those two things then a real tree okay so buying a real tree or renting a real tree um, and then when you've finished with it making sure if you've rented it it goes back or um, if you have bought it it's recycled and there are various charity schemes i think um that come round after christmas do you know um, manolins did it last year do you know if uh, any are doing it this year christine have you got any knowledge um manolins have done it a few years and i think the scouting group yeah. i don't know if they're involved in the same thing and it goes to ogden doesn't it that's um, right yeah. yeah yeah they use it there in the landscaping but um, also when you're buying your real tree it's where it's being grown and where it's from as exactly. well, looking to get it as local as possible um, I mean that's less on the plastic reduction and more about um, obviously carbon emissions in terms of how far it's traveled but you know it's all it's all part of the same environmental issues really and what I haven't put on there because I don't want to encourage you to do this is to buy an artificial tree brand new having said that we have an artificial tree that we did buy brand new because we intend to keep it for a long time um, and I think that's really the message isn't it about reuse yeah. so that might not be what people necessarily thought in terms of um, the best options from an environmental point of view with trees but um, that is the way it goes okay so other decorations so I think keep it simple Okay, so less is more for me, especially, you know, at a time when we're probably not going to be having lots of Christmas parties because we can't have people round. Although that would be lovely, um, it's not something we can do at the moment. So it's an opportunity to keep it simple um, and, and, you know, not go over, over the top and buy, feel tempted to buy things that we probably don't need. So just taking a minute to think whether it's something that you really really do need or you want it so much that you can't resist um, and really make that consideration i think uh, use what you've already got so we said before uh, use the tree you already have if you've got one use the decorations you already have if you've got them um, you don't have to replace your decorations every year you might want to add to them and then keep the ones that you've got and that's nice but um christine and i were chatting about this yesterday um about how it's nice to have decorations that you've had for a long time there's a sentimental attachment to some of those things and it brings back memories and i'm sure some people who've got grown-up children will still perhaps have decorations that their children made at preschool or nursery school um that they keep and they treasure homemade things that was a lovely segue into homemade there wasn't it <laughs> talking about children like you knew what was coming i know <laughs> um, but yeah homemade so things like maybe um using um 
foraging for items to make a wreath that you've got you you know you can make that yourself making table decorations um all sorts of things you can make paper chains any other ideas christine of things that you salt, like salt dough yeah that's a good one salt dough decorations um and if you've got young children uh, around then those are all great things that you can do with them i mean it, you know mine are a little bit older now but christine's got you've got younger ones you know you have to be patient don't you with them but uh it's uh, yeah. it's a nice it's a nice thing to do yes it is and like you said it's then something that you'd keep exactly and using natural materials so i mentioned foraging for uh things to make a wreath or table decorations but making things out of natural materials is a nice one and if you haven't got access to them craft shops do sell them um and as i say shops are opening up back uh this week aren't they uh for that for that sort of thing if you're using natural materials then as well they will then break down it's not yeah you know, exactly it's not going to be around for, forever but keep it for the next year oh yeah so, keep it. yeah it should last more i mean you know obviously a wreath will go won't it and if you're using um you know living foliage and stuff then that yeah. that will go but if you're using dried uh dried fruit say for example think i'm thinking of things like oranges and apples yeah. or cinnamon sticks and um, stuff like that um even sometimes dried berries can last uh, for a couple of a couple of years yeah um, but, but like Things like salt, yeah, things like the salt dough that you mentioned, you can keep that for a long time. Yeah. Okay. So over to you, Christine. Gifts unwrapping. So I think the first point on this, oh, can you do the, the yeah. next bullet point? So we were quite excited because Christine now has the opportunity to say what, Christine? Well, I'm not going to say it yet. Just wait. Okay, right. wait. Don't, don't jump the gun, Helen. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, we did mention this before with the rehoming um, by second hand. Um, there are so many ways to buy second hand now, um, and th often in in buying second hand, they might you might find things that are actually unused or like new. Um, we bought a whole. I won't say this too loudly. We bought a huge train set for our boys a few years ago, and it was it was massive. And they played with it. They still play with it now. They they absolutely love it. But it was second hand from somebody that lives around the corner, and it wasn't all in its new box. But it, they they didn't care. They loved it. Um, and you can get some really nice vintage things second hand. I was showing this to Helen before. This is one of my husband's books that he got second hand and it's obviously very old and ancient but he loves it um, and it looks really nice as well um, so he was really pleased with that as a gift um, so yeah it doesn't always have to be like brand new and um, it's definitely worth trawling the charity shops just because that's fun as well and you will find some fun things in there so next point please Helen right this is really 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 good this year um, the useful and the experiences um, because the experiences that you can give to people this year um, we were talking about yesterday could just be um, you could make a voucher for a friend to come around and watch a film with you at your house in 2021 can you imagine um, or come around and have a Sunday dinner at my house um, things that you ha we haven't been able to do this year you could write a voucher for your for a friend or a family member to have that in the new year that would be an amazing gift i mean if anybody any of my friends watching family um babysitting <laughs> that was my suggestion yesterday yeah. wasn't it? and christine was like oh my goodness that is the best yeah, present if I, just, ever. if I just have a pile of envelopes that all say like what oh, nice babysitting thanks that'd be awesome um <laughs> But there are obviously there are experiences as well that local businesses really need really need us at the minute so buying vouchers um to go to your to your local um i'm i'm all about the food and drink can you tell <laughs> can buy to go to your local cafe or your local pub that's currently unable to open and in the new year we'll you know let's go there um or vouchers for local businesses that would really appreciate uh, you know our support at the minute um, and useful things um, 
I was thinking about this in terms of plastic free. There are quite a lot of plastic free lifestyle items like the uh, the razors um, and that are quite expensive and that somebody might want to try but it's quite a big thing to do but it'd be a really good gift to get somebody at Christmas um, can you think of any other examples like that Helen yeah well I guess stuff like um, a nice flask or yeah. water bottles stuff like that um, the lovely bamboo cutlery, you know, the sort of more high end things that um, that are sort of eco friendly as well. Yeah, like reusable makeup wipes, things like that, that are they're really lovely and, and gifty, but actually would be reusable and, and, and last and be useful. Uh, next point. Um, so homemade gifts. Oh, look, I've done a little link because you could make some reusable wipes uh, if you're very crafty um helen was saying she's been been knitting um for a year i'm making a pair of socks for my daughter i started them last december they're still not finished she's probably gone out of them <laughs> <laughs> if you've got a, if you're very crafty like that then you would be able to easily make gifts like well maybe not easily it might take you a year um but <laughs> knitting and sewing or bake something um you know but if you're not as if you just wish you were crafty like I do then you could just you know a jar of ingredients to bake something um with the little recipe attached would look a very cute gift and also um it's homemade um photo album which is really old-fashioned because <laughs> people just have all the pictures on a on a screen now but if you made a little photo album that might be a really nice gift so they don't, when you think homemade, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, here's something I um, painted or sewed or sewed, is that the word? Yeah, I think so. So yeah, there's other ways of, of doing homemade. And what else is on the list on our bullet points? Oh, the next bullet point. Next bullet point, please. By locals, I've already said this, we really need to support our local businesses at the minute. Um, <clears throat> whether or not they've reopened and even if you feel a bit uncertain about actually hitting the high street a lot and you maybe you want the convenience as well as Amazon um, there's a load of businesses that have just gone online because they've had to obviously and they're all over um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter um, and they're really worth looking up um, and supporting even if you don't want to go out in person but just to try and shop local and um, often you'll find if you go to your uh, local businesses as well that they'll know more about the supply chain about where things have come from and you'll be able to have a little bit of a chat to them about you know all, all your cards are wrapped in plastic and they'll maybe know a bit about the supply chain and be able to say well we've, we're getting these from wherever and actually like I think I think Hallmark might have decided not to do glitter this year or maybe it's next but there's certain brands that are going right well we're not putting glitter on these things this year so you know that they're making an effort so um you maybe want to support those or or yes those ones are all wrapped in plastic but hang on a minute look at these ones these are all you know um not um what and what were you saying about the scheme that's in Calderdale Helen, that sounded oh yeah I was talking about um totally locally um so it's um, a pilot project at the moment in Hebden Bridge where lots of local businesses are signed up to it and you can if you only really if you live in the Hebden Bridge Mytham Royd uh Hepton Stall areas I think um which there might be some people on tonight who are um you can go on the website and you can order things so you can order a book from the bookshop and maybe a, a soap from the gift shop and some vegetables from a farm shop all all from different local businesses but on one site and then it is delivered to you on the um cargo electric cargo bikes so it's um zero emissions as well so that's something that I'm hopeful that might be kind of rolled out in other places as well. Yeah. But the other one was, um, and uh, 
Dan, who's moderating the comments, I'm sure will be able to tell you this. And there's somewhere where you can get books in a similar way. So it's a website, it's not Amazon. Uh, it's a, another website where you can buy books and you can nominate your local bookshop or a local bookshop to receive the commission for that. So that's something that he uses. So I, I'm hopefully he'll put, he'll put that in the comments. Yeah. Um, are you ready for the next item? I am. Uh, is that the last bullet point? Oh no, there's one more. <laughs> I feel like we've maybe covered that a little bit in in the local. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Because um, it's asking the questions, isn't it, about yeah. the supply, where, what is the supply chain? Yeah. Yeah. What is this made from? Where has it come from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your, your suppliers. Okay. So, so now is the, now is the made. moment. I think when you get yeah. to say. Next slide, please. Hey! <laughs> so sad. <laughs> okay, so this, this is the second part of it. So we've done gifts and this is the wrapping side. Um, and there is a link that you've put there, um, but I think if you just Google... Yeah, I actually don't think this link will work at the moment just because the way I've got it set up. Um, fine. Well, it's the, the art of wrapping. Yes. But there are lots of um, how-to videos on YouTube um, and um, to be honest I think it really is the sort of thing that comes with practice and if you remember, you probably don't remember, but when you first tried to wrap things up with uh, conventional wrapping paper it was probably quite a mess um, and the more you do it the more the better you get at it and the neater they look and the fancier you can make it and it's the same with the, the fabric wrapping and the size of the fabric and things can really affect it. So um, I often just do small bits with um, matching ribbon, but I do have, this is, <laughs> I bought this scarf in a charity shop um, when it was my son's birthday. It's a rainbow colored, so I would like it. Um, and I used it, it had a really big gift wrap. So I wrapped up his gift in this and because it's really big, I didn't even need any ribbon. I found I could just tie it in a knot. Um, so I have since used it um, on all three boys' birthdays, wrapped up presents, because this is the secret to it. If you find something you really love, only wrap up presents that are gonna stay in your house. Because if you wrap up, last year, I did some gorgeous gold and red wrapping and sent it off to various houses so um mom karen if you want to wrap our presents in that and send it back this year that would be awesome <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you love your you know i use this all the time and i have a little bag now of um fabrics that i really like that i use every birthday within the house because they're not going anywhere and i know that somebody else isn't going to unwrap it and throw it away also in between times i wear this as a scarf <laughs> um but if you want to learn how to do it properly you can definitely google it and there's a, a real art to it which i'm afraid i can't demonstrate um and what's the next bullet point so reusing um my friend beck and i have a little joke whenever we give each other a gift in a bag that you know, I really love the gift, but if you haven't written on, oh, so somebody's written on this. Because if you haven't written on the on the tag, then that's the best gift ever because you can reuse it with the tag. Don't write on it. So obviously you just have to take the tag off. But bags are really easy to reuse. Um, tins, vintage tins, and like the Christmassy tins that people get your biscuits in. This is a very vintage one. Um, I'm very um, I have a friend that sends us gifts with, in Amazon gift wrapping and they come in these bags which are Amazon but um, they're really nice and sparkly and great to reuse um, and as goodie bags as well. Um, what else have I got that's reusable? Oh Hessian, Hessian's great for cycle my props. <laughs> So, I can't yeah, see them so because all I can see on my uh, screen is PowerPoint. So I'm I'm missing out on all of this. Oh, sorry, Helen. No, I'm loving the sound. It's like you know <laughs> when the radio play and they have all these sound effects. It's a little bit like that. <laughs> like the bang of the tin. Yeah, um, it's like the arches. It's awesome. <laughs> so um, I do also um, know of a girl who is 
quite well known within her friendship group as uh, somebody, I think it's just because she really likes gift wrap that she keeps it. But all her friends are really careful in how they wrap her presents because they know that she will want to really carefully unwrap it without it being torn because she wants to keep it. I assume that she uses it to rewrap and not that she just has a cupboard full. I don't know, if, Christy, if you're watching, <laughs> you could answer that question. If not, I'll ask her and I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, you could reuse it if you've maybe wrapped a really big, big gift. But it often just gets ripped, doesn't it, if you use conventional wrapping paper. So reusable items are, are a great idea. You ready for the next one? Right, yeah. Homemade. We've kind of I covered. feel like I've covered that. Yeah. We'll move on. Oh, apart from newspaper, brown paper, um, when you get a delivery in a box that's padded with brown paper that makes really good wrapping paper you can stamp it yourself decorate yourself get your kids to draw on it um i said newspaper didn't i yeah so uh, and if you're going to buy if you're going to buy wrapping paper because you really want really really want to there's the scrunch test here's some wrapping paper that's been hanging around my house for a while so when you scrunch up you have a look this one's very shiny it feels quite plasticky this one feels more paper -y. i can tell if we scrunch them to check so if it's you see this one sprung straight back out because that one's i know you can't see this color but um that one is got a high plastic content in the one that not that scrunches right up but like a normal piece of paper would just scrunch up and not spring back that is more you are more able to recycle it however um dennis the dust cart who is um i think exeter council's recycling facebook po person i follow them they have all sorts of interesting information they had the fact about the 227 mile thousand miles of wrapping paper used in the uk every year that you said at the beginning helen mm -hmm. which i was like gosh where's I wonder how far that is. Uh, so I tried to look it up. Well, it's uh, the circumference of the Earth is 24,901 miles. So it's like nine times that. Wow. So wrapping paper just in the UK, just in one year. It's just too much. And a lot of it will have a lot of it will have a high plastic content. A lot of it will have um glitter on it i'm just going to bring the next point in then because that is avoid cool. shiny and glitter um and a lot of it'll have glitter on it a lot of it's that what was i going to say about it oh so they said that the co that even the recyclable wrapping paper is really really poor quality paper um and it won't make very good paper pulp the paper mills will give them very much money for it so you're actually going to be reducing the money coming into your council if you put rubbish um into your recycling bin so really avoid avoid normal disposable wrapping paper if you can try and do something different try and use brown paper or a box the box that your stuff got delivered in just decorate it or put a nice ribbon around it or some string or use a scarf or um, an old pillowcase or a tea towel or go to a scrap shop and get some scraps of fabric in colours to match your decorations if you want to be coordinating. Um, there's loads of other things you can do. Is that the last point? One more. Oh, oh yeah. So obviously all the things I've said don't require tape or glue. But um, as you said, Helen, you've used like Prit stick, have you? In place of Prit stick, I've also used. I got some in the range a few years ago. It's like a roll of um gum gum tape. So it's like when you lick an envelope, but it's taped yeah. like that, made of paper. Yeah. And we, we have used that as well from time to time. I think that's quite a lot easier to get hold of than it ever used to be as well. It used mm -hmm. to be quite a, a specialist item, but it does seem to be a little bit more mainstream now, and it definitely be in a lot of the zero waste shops, won't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Are we done with gifts and wrapping? Yeah, she'll say it again. Go on then. Next slide, please. Hooray! So we've got another video.
So this is to introduce the next section of food and drink. And this is a video from Christian Aid, the charity. And it's actually really about food waste. Um, but if you're wasting food at Christmas, you're also wasting the packaging that it came in. So, um, and of course, food waste is something that we want to avoid anyway. So let's have a look. Okay, so the message from that is don't buy more than you need. Um, really think about what you actually need in terms of food at Christmas, especially this year. Many of us are going to be spending, having a smaller Christmas um, celebration. So you don't need a giant turkey. You probably don't need a massive sack of potatoes. Um, just plan ahead. Think about the things that you do need, what you're going to eat when. Um, and then when you do come to do your shopping, think about doing the following things. So the first thing that uh, I think is a good idea is to buy things loose. So the obvious one is fruit and veg. If you go to the supermarket, you can buy your uh, fruit and veg loose. You can take your own um, little produce bags or you can just you can actually just put it onto the conveyor belt if you want to. Um, they won't stop you from doing that and you can just put it into your shopping bags. You know, it, it, it's, it's, when I go shopping, I actually go to an outdoor market for my fruit and veg. And actually, I would thoroughly recommend going to an outdoor market because they're fantastic. I just give the, the fruit and veg guy my bag and tell him what I want and he just sticks it all in. Yeah, it's the same. I go to the local veg shop and that's yeah. exactly the same. You just hand your bag over and you can see everything. Everything's a lot fresher and more in season. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's the, the thing we said about shopping local, the supply chain, they know where it's come from. Exactly. And it's much easier to only buy what you need because it's not prepackaged. So if you only want two potatoes, you can just buy two potatoes quite easily. If there's just you at home or maybe just you and one other person and you don't need very much, you can buy smaller items. Um, so fruit and veg is an obvious one, but you can actually do this with other things. Morrison's are pretty good at this. So if you take your own container to their butcher counter or their fish counter and say, can you put my rashers of bacon in this box, please? Or I'd like a few pieces of salmon in this box. They will do that for you. Um, obviously, your container needs to be clean. But again, I go to a uh, fishmonger at an outdoor market and I do the same. So I ask him for four pieces of salmon every week and he sticks them inside my box uh, that I take away with me and, and bring back every week. Um, so it's not just fruit and veg. Fruit and veg is the obvious one um, and that's you know really easy. But if you can, try and do it with other things as well. Um, that sort of does bring us on to what we were just saying about buying local. If you're buying from a local business, they are far more likely to be able to help you to avoid single use plastic because they've got control over how they how they order things, how they source things. Um, and met very many local businesses. I know we've got probably a few business local business owners on the uh, on the session tonight who they go above and beyond to do the right thing ethically as well. Um, and uh, they're heroes, they're actual heroes, especially during the last year of COVID. Mm -hmm. They have absolutely done everything to try and help people. 
Um, and if we can support them, not only does it help the environment, but it helps our local areas, it helps our local economy, and that helps us all. So I think it's really, really important. And uh, it's something that I've pledged to do, especially this year, not just with food and drink, but with, uh, you know, presents and all sorts of things, is to buy from lo small local businesses, um, rather than giving my money to massive multinational companies. Um, Another one that's good is a local delivery service. So um, I'm thinking of things like a veg box scheme, or you may be able to order um, meat and poultry uh, for your Christmas table from a local butcher or a local farm. Um, these are excellent schemes. You get very, very good quality uh, locally produced um, produce. Um, and usually you can ask them if you don't want it to be wrapped in plastic and they will do that for you. Um, some brilliant, brilliant schemes around. I'm sure people will jump in the comments depending on what part of the district. Uh, there's probably people from Bradford and Calderdale uh, listening to the session, so it will be different local uh, local businesses uh, that you want you want to mention and support. I think we're quite lucky that there are so many. We're very, very lucky. Yeah. So using, I've sort of alluded to this earlier when we we're talking about buy loose, but um, take carrier bags with you. Please, please, please take carrier bags with you. Um, it's so easy to do and it's a brilliant way of saving single use plastic. And the thing is, Helen, if you do forget, then, and you've gone to the supermarket and you've forgotten your bags, just put it back in the trolley, take it out to your car. <laughs> well, exactly. To the boot of your car. Yeah. It's really hard work and, <laughs> If you punish yourself like that, then you are much longer. You'll remember the next time. Remember it next time, I can tell you from experience. <laughs> and the same with the containers. And that's really what, uh, when I was talking about going to the butchers or the fishmongers and things, taking your own containers. But there are refill shops out there, of course, um, that you can buy things like pasta, rice, nuts, dried fruits. And you can take your own containers, whether that's a bag or a box or a jar or anything, really. Um, and they are actually, again, really fantastic because you will be get, buying really good quality, ethically produced stuff. A lot of it will be will have been um, either made or grown in the UK. Um, so again, bringing down those food miles, which is important for uh, wider environmental considerations. If you can't do any of those things, look for things that are packaged in glass, aluminium or cardboard. Um, when you're going around the shops. So if you're thinking to yourself, um, I want um, Coca-Cola, not my favorite drink, but people like it, or lemonade, buy cans rather than buying a plastic bottle. Buy cans of it. I actually prefer it in a way because the person drinks the can and then you haven't got half a bottle of lemonade that goes flat. So, or, you know, your tonic maybe for your gin. Buy the cans rather than the bottle. Uh, the plastic bottle. I think that's a really good tip because all these things can be recycled much more easily and multiple times. So they're much better recycled for recycled forever, forever, can't they? And yeah. they're much lighter for transporting than glass. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, I mean, having said that, if you buy things that are, are packaged in glass, jars of jam and chutney and things like that then obviously the jars can be kept they can be re reused by you at home for all kinds of things craft items i made a little um should give a shout out to bradford cathedral actually our friends at bradford oh, yeah. cathedral and um, they did a little advent video at the weekend where uh, they were making a little uh, advent lantern in a glass jar and i did that it was an old jam jar um so that's there's loads of things but again you can you can stick them in the recycling if you haven't got a use for them i think a jam jar is a useful item brilliant yeah because yeah. uh, i was just thinking about what you're saying there that it, you can use it as a decoration yeah. and you could also use it for your gifts it's it's your packaging really you could put yeah. anything in it and then just all I think actually, this was from, I think it was from Jen Gale, who did the uh, waste hierarchy. Um, for presents for children's birthdays, she fills a, an old jam jar with sweets or chocolate buttons or something oh, like that's that. Nice. And that's yeah, really that's cute. like the sweetie corn idea, but yeah. without but it being a plastic corn. Exactly. What a great idea. And inexpensive as well. Mm. And lastly, make your own stuff. So if you make your own mince pies, they won't be packaged in one of those plastic trays with the, uh, you know, with each pie, and it won't have an aluminium case on it if you make your own. 
if you make your own Christmas pudding, it won't come in a plastic um, pot. The same with things like cake and, um, you know, all kinds of stuff that we, we have at Christmas. If you make your own biscuits, there's another one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, gingerbread, all sorts. If you make it yourself, you've got rid of all that packaging. Yes, it requires time, but do you know what? It is massive fun, especially if you've got kids and young people around. They absolutely love it. Um, I always make mince pies with my daughter every year. and She, she loves it. And last couple of years, we've had my niece around, who's just turned five. Um, sadly, she won't be able to come this year. But maybe we should have a mince pie making session on Zoom. Yeah, that's to do with family members. <laughs> that sounds like a Christmas present to me. <laughs> yeah, I hope she's not listening. She's oh. probably been fed by <laughs> <laughs> So those are my tips for, for food and drink and reducing uh, waste when you're thinking about planning for your Christmas um, treats this year. Um, so kind of, we're, we're sort of coming to the end of the session now. And to finish with, a word from our sponsor. I wish he was our sponsor, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant, would that be? Yeah. So um, these are a few words from... Uh, David Attenborough, who's a big hero to lots of us who are interested in my environmental issues. And this is talking about waste. If there's one thing we all have to do, it is to avoid waste. Not to waste food, energy, plastics, or time. Each of us can use our actions and our voice to save our planet. We may be in different countries, of different ages, or facing different challenges in our daily lives. So the way we make an impact is different for each of us. What is important is that we try and that we try as if our very future depends upon it. Really impactful, I think that. And what I take away from that is that we can all do something. And if you can just do a small thing, it's important. Please don't be put off if all you do is one thing. That one thing is really important and it's valuable and we think it's brilliant and we think you're fantastic and we think you're a hero for doing it. If you can do a thousand things, you are equally heroic. If you're somewhere in the middle, you are also absolutely amazing. Everyone who does something is making a contribution. Before we finish, I just wanted to, uh, I need to do a few thanks. So um, Denham Town Council are absolutely brilliant. They've supported the Plastic Free Denham uh, project from the beginning um, and uh, really, really helped us. I, I suspect that Christine, you have a similar arrangement uh, with somebody, have you? Keith for Town Council. Keith for Town Council. Yes. Surfers Against Sewage, who is the charity that we uh, both work with, both groups and all the plastic free communities across the country, then it's a massive network. Um, we work with them, they help us out, they give us targets that we work towards um, and things to do and ideas and um, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the sources of information for tonight's presentation came from Greenpeace USA, GWP Group, that was mostly the statistics, Jen Gale from Sustainable Ish, Christian Aid, David Attenborough, of course. And David Attenborough's film there at the end was courtesy of the Worldwide Fund for Nature in the UK. So I'm just going to come back so that you can actually see me. Hi! Hi, Hi I'm back! Hi. So I hope that um, you've enjoyed tonight's presentation. Lots of things to think about. Put some questions in for um tomorrow night's session um we'll we'll have a think about what we think are some frequently asked questions um and, and we'll do that um but do and i'm not sure what because i haven't been able to see the comments you see as we're going along um so some of them might have been answered along the way but we'll try and address that um and you can put um you can put questions in tomorrow night as well same time tomorrow night 7 30 here on the uh, eco shop page um, if you want to email us with a question, please do. Um, you can email me at plasticfreedenome at gmail.com. Is there anything you want to say to finish, Christine? Yes, I would just like to say, uh, finish by congratulating you on achieving oh. your plastic free community <laughs> status. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for putting this all together. You are very organised and very hardworking, so it's no surprise that you've achieved it. You've done loads and it's oh, very inspiring. Thanks. 
It was supposed to be under wraps until Friday, but I just got a little bit excited. I did see it. I've not just announced it. I saw it on Facebook. Oh, no. No. Whoops. Oh, never mind. We're on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was on, I was on BCB yesterday with, uh, with Phil. So I don't know if Phil's watching because uh, he's a great supporter of uh, what we do. Um, and I was like, oh, never mind. We'll just throw a caution to the wind. So there will be an official announcement on uh, Friday from Surfers Against Sewage. But uh, we've kind of let the cat out of the bag. But never mind, well, you know, it's all it's good. Lovely to have some good news. Yeah, well. yeah, really excited. So I'm hoping that we might, um, besides BCB, who are brilliant, maybe get some. Um, hopefully, the TNA maybe might be interested as well. Keith Lee News. So we'll just. Have mm. to see. Um, but yeah, it's been brilliant to see everyone. Thanks for coming. We've just we're dead on an hour, aren't we? So that. Oh wow. <laughs> look at that do come along tomorrow night with your questions tell your friends this live feed will be available on our facebook page and i will also try and edit it so that i get um i can get it on the youtube channel as well oh nick's just put a comment nick's one of our town councillors by the way denham town council brilliant ah oh, thanks nick that's a lovely thing to say thanks to everyone for coming and we'll say good night bye bye